In this tutorial, we're going to look at a few aspects from our Bitwig Studio 8-track tutorial. First up, modulation. Bitwig has what they call a unified modulation system. This provides a consistent and simple way to modulate parameters throughout the DAW's devices. It includes envelopes, macros, and of course LFOs. And this is what we're going to set up on our Thorn CM synth. Select this track so Thorn CM is visible in the device panel. At the bottom left of the Thorn CM device, there's a tiny arrow. Select this to show the modulator slots. There are three, each with a plus icon. Click on any one of these and from the floating window, choose LFO. Select OK to close the window and return to the modulator. Now use the tiny play icon to open the LFO's parameter panel. There are lots of options, but we're keeping it simple, sticking with a regular sine wave. Choose a rate from the drop down at the top. We've chosen quarter note synced. Then change the free setting at the bottom to sync so that the LFO restarts on playback. We're going to assign the LFO to Thorn CM's output pan. On the modulator, click on the blue arrow. It should now pulse blue and yellow. Find the master pan parameter in Thorn CM's list on the right and position the cursor over the parameter. Now drag the cursor to create the desired depth of effect. Now click on the blue yellow modulator arrow again to exit the assignment mode. The master pan parameter for Thorn CM should now be pulsing. If you open the Thorn CM instrument window with the window icon in the bottom left of the device, you'll now see the pan in the limiter section auto panning. Now let's look at the launcher. Bitwig's clip launcher has some very interesting features. One thing we can do is add automation to the actual launcher clips. Create another instrument track and search for a clip called Falling Up. Drag this into a launcher slot. Then open the device in the device panel and open its remote controls. These are the six dots in the bottom left. Trigger the launch clip and try out the remote controls. We're going to use the low pass and automate its behavior throughout the clip. In the play menu, select the automation right option for the clip launcher. Also open the automation lane on the track header. This is the orange button below the mute button. Now we simply launch the clip and tweak the low pass control. You should be able to see it writing the automation in the track lane. Double click on the automation below the clip and it opens the automation editor panel at the bottom. Here we can fine tune the launcher clip automation. Note the automation is red for launcher clips and blue for arrange clips. Once done, we can create a part using the launcher or drag the clip, including its automation, into the arrange timeline. Finally, let's look at Bitwig's context sensitive cursor. Bitwig's cursor has smart tool switching. For the side panels, it behaves like a typical pointer. Meanwhile, in timeline beat rulers, it doubles as a zoom tool and loop point selector when over the ruler. 
and then switches to a crosshair in free space. For clips, it's a pointer over the top section, a selector over the bottom section, and has handles on the ends for trim, fade and loop, as you move from the top to the bottom of the block. Finally, it helps invoke a variety of context-specific floating menus.